We are going to discuss the high temperature poly polymers or polyether imid. Uh, this will look suspiciously like the thermoplastics lecture on polyether imids because it's exactly the same. Uh, I combine both Kapton and Ultem in here, so we're just going to recap that for the purpose of focusing on the thermosetting type properties. Um, after World War II, there's rapid expansion of the aerospace industry, so new materials uh, were needed. Things that were lightweight, oxidatively and thermally stable, good mechanical properties, and viable in the kind of harsh environments that aerospace uh, experiences. So in the last 40 years, there have been a lot of discoveries of unusual, unusual high temperature polymers. And when it came to polyimids, these were introduced in the 1960s by DuPont. Uh, these polymers are successful because of the relatively inexpensive starting material, and then uh, changing out the various different monomers gives you the ability to tailor these polymers quite, quite widely. Uh, when it comes to polyimids, this is a new breed of specialty plastic materials that are characterized by high strength to weight ratio, thermal oxidative stability, excellent mechanical properties, and for those reasons, they're widely applied in aerospace. And there are two types. Uh, the, th the thermoplastic type is sort of pseudo-thermoplastic. You can recycle and re-soften it, um, but you're not typically doing that with something of this cost. And this is known as Altem. The thermoset are the Kapton brands, and these are the set upon curing are not softenable. When it comes to the characteristic group of a polyimid, you have an imid group. So you have something here that looks like an anhydride ring, except you have a nitrogen here. And these R groups tend to be uh, aromatic in nature, which give it the very high TG properties that uh, polyimids display. This is a general imid reaction scheme. You typically start with a dianhydride and a diamine. You end up with an, aleph an amic acid intermediate. You open up that ring. Then you apply heat to split off a mole of water and close that ring again. So this reacts here, and then again on the other side as well, in a second, it simultaneously, opens up the ring, you split off a mole of water, and you reclose to form this imid. When it comes to the relationship between property and structure, uh, you can see here that there's a lot of rigid structures in these backbones. And what that does is it has the TG, again, this is the glass transition temperature, not the melting temperature, the glass transition temperature. That pushes that TG up to very, very high levels. That's the point at which it becomes rubbery. Not when it melts, but goes from a very glassy solid to a rubbery solid. And these are as high as 365 Celsius for it to become rubbery, even. So if you're going to process this through thermoplastic means, you have a much, much higher processing temperature than 365. Um, if you use a polyether imid, that oxygen in the backbone can give you some more flexibility. So you can take that TG down to 236 uh, if you have the right structure. But again, these are kind of known for their extremely high temperature properties, which also comes with a high TG. We have conveniently color-coded this particular structure for you. So the ether is green, sorry, the ether is, is red, oh my gosh, and the imid is green. This is Altem, and this is the thermoplastic polyimid. Uh, one thing to point out here, um, this can be melted and molded, that's why it's thermoplastic, and it has the high temperature stability, but it, has, it, but it does have a melting temperature, it can be worked. This it can be up to $24 a pound, based on whatever grade you're using. And in aerospace, it finds a wide variety of applications. You can uh, process polyether imid by traditional uh, thermoplastic methods. Your melt temperature is high, over 340 Celsius. Your mold temperature is also high. But you can also machine uh, polyether imid by conventional methods in laser and water jet. They can be, you can also make films by extrusion or casting, and fibers by extrusion or spinning. You can also bond uh, polyether imid. Fuse bonding, ultrasonic bonding, solvent, and adhesive bonding. So these are amorphous, that's why you can solve and weld them. Kapton is the thermosetting polyether imid. Uh, it can be used continuously at 300 Celsius and short periods at 450 Celsius. And this forms very tough and films and, and is resistant to most chemicals. Kapton itself has a very strong brown-orange color because of the charge transfer interactions between the electron-rich diamine and the electron-poor dianhydride. The final product is this deep kind of brown-orange color. And this is Kapton, shown here. Pyromolytic anhydride reacted with bis 4 aminophenyl ether. There are alternative monomers that you can also use. 
um, other aromatic dianhydrides, other aromatic diamines. The take home uh, from this is the aromatics are what give it its high temperature properties and having those in the backbone preserves those high temperature properties which is one of the reasons why these are advantageous materials. So you don't want to drop it too far because you lose the high temperature properties. So you want to keep that rigidity in the mo molecule. So here is the kapton synthesis. You have a cyclic dianhydride and a step polymerization with a diamine. So once again, you follow this polyamic acid intermediate. Uh, it opens up the ring and then you heat it up again at very high temperature to drive off water and reseal that ring to give you your imid group shown here. So these are your imid groups that form uh, after you reclose the ring. The mark of polyimids is they have very high strength and rigidity uh, while retaining flexibility. They tend to have uh, good elongation properties. Uh, if they're carbon filled, they tend to have less elongation than if they're unfilled. Uh, this compares to other things that have, you know, up to, up to six times the elongation. These don't have those. These have very, very low uh, linear thermal expansion and mold shrinkage as well. These are also known as being flame retardant materials. Uh, they have excellent heat and flame resistance and they meet the FAA flammability requirements for aircraft interior applications. So you can see here polyether emid has a limiting oxygen index of 47, poly emid about 44. So uh, they fit the bill in terms of being self-extinguishing. Again, self-extinguishing, FAA requires it to be um, over uh, 27, it has to be above 21, that being the concentration of oxygen and air percentage. These have very good low voltage insulation properties, but you're only using this, these things in a situation where you require the other properties. So if you want a good low voltage insulator, there's a lot of things that are a lot less expensive than this. Um, but they have good UV resistance and weatherability. They can be gamma radiated and they retain 94% of their strength after 400 millirads of cobalt irradiation. Very good chemical resistance, resistant to most hydrocarbons, alcohols, halogenated solvents, acids, and bases, but they can be susceptible to some aromatic or partially halogenated solvents. Low moisture absorptivity. Um, if you're going to process this thermoplastically, you would need to dry the, pea, uh, the polyetheramid for a while. Uh, but somebody at some point took some polyether imid and boiled it for 10,000 hours and it re retained up to 85% of its tensile strength. So if you need a good low voltage insulator that can withstand boiling water for 10,000 hours, that's why you would invest in a polyether imid. These are good for under the hood components like temperature sensors, lamp sockets. So again, these are things that are going to experience kind of harsh conditions. Fuel system components, jet engine components, low smoke sheeting for aircraft interiors. Uh, the reason these are chosen is because they're tough, dimensionally stable, chemical resistant, again, high heat properties. Um, they are less expensive than some other things, say like the use of metals, because they, you can reduce the weight and therefore build and reduce the number of necessary parts as well. They're used in medical applications like instrument handles, things that, can, that are reused and can be um, uh, sterilized, non-implant type prostheses like teeth or artificial limb replacement, Nebulizer components, um, because you can sterilize these things, they can withstand all manner of sterilization techniques, including chemicals, gamma radiation, steam autoclaving. These are frequently used in electrical applications, things that where you require good dimensional stability, like an explosion-proof container, or uh, electrical uh, systems that are present in harsh environments. So printed circuit boards or connectors, uh, they are also used for industrial applications like fluid handling components for things that handle a lot of nasty stuff, um, mechanical couplers, high burst strength vessels, and fuel filter housings. These aren't used so much anymore for microwave cookware, but they are used. Some uh, curling iron components, um, also dual purpose trays for microwave and oven cooking. Uh, you can use uh, polyetheramid when you co-extrude it with uh, polycarbonate. Uh, and those will meet FDA requirements for you know, good warpage prevention, non-stick properties, and you get good low temperature impact strength. Typically, the temperature of your freezer is about negative four Celsius, so when you include polyether image, you get better um, low temperature impact strength. These are also used in uh, precision molded computer disks, some fiber optic components. They are used in some carbon reinforced fishing reels lightweight flame resistant structural panels and firefighters helmets are made from a blend of polyether emid and polycarbonate so it has both impact resistance and flame resistance. 
So when you're looking at the various different types and manufacturers, DuPont still covers Kapton. Uh, when it comes to uh, the thermal setting variety, uh, when it comes to, say, the thermoplastic type edition, uh, DuPont also ca carries some of that. GE is the one that provides Altem. So DuPont is Kapton and GE is Altem. And there's also some other smaller companies like Sibagaygi um, that also make some polyether and then either monomers or resins. So here are your products. Um, again, you see this dark kind of orange brown color. Uh, that's kind of characteristic of polyether amid because of those dianhydride um, and diamine uh, electron transfer reactions. Thus concludes high temperature polymers. This also concludes all of the lectures for exam three. Uh, and so there'll be a few questions on uh, polyether amids, high temperature thermosetting polymers, and then from there we'll move on to exam three.